Yeah, hello and welcome to our Banter Blitz show. I hope this is working all right. We had some substantial issues last week, but we um, yeah did a test run today and it uh, seems to be fixed. However, I still had an issue <laughs> like five minutes ago. So it's not quite clear what um, what's happening. I hope um, the stream is working all right. For some reason, I um, couldn't write anything in the chat, which is kind of surprising. Please give me a message in the chat if this is working all right. I don't see any chat messages at all, which is um, kind of weird. Maybe if I refresh this, I'm going to see uh, chat messages. That would be kind of reassuring if you can tell me that this is working. I see my own stream, but um, it's still better if someone tells me if it is working fine. Okay, I've got a couple of challenges for this session. I'm going to start with Phenomen and see what he is up to here. Yeah. Okay, so Phenomen, I've got white. I'm going to mix it up a little bit with my opening moves, not play the same stuff all the time. So we got a Sicilian going on. And uh, let's see, it's an open Sicilian. Yeah, okay, against G6, I'm happy to transpose into Maroxy bind. Yeah, I don't see any chat messages. This is really weird. It seems like this chat is not working and uh, I like to answer questions or um, react to comments in the chat, but I don't see any. So there's also nobody um, around that can um, tell me if this is a fine working stream or not. The software, te software tells me it is fine, but yeah. Okay, Phenomen here went with b6, and probably he will fear Kedo next. Um, I'm pretty happy with that. Quite often, b6 is a helpful move for white in those structures because quite often white will put a piece on d5. I mean, the, the knight, a piece is kind of imprecise. And um, when it gets taken, then the c file and the c6 square can be useful. Now e5 was played and um, yeah here I'm putting pressure on, on d6 so that looks fine. Yeah I really wonder about the chat. Yeah this is why isn't the chat working? It's really strange. My own messages are also not uh, not coming through at all. Refreshing didn't help and uh, huh, really weird. Okay, so I put some pressure on d6 and um, yeah, how does he cover it after knight to b5? It looks um, difficult to do. a7 is also hanging. Hmm, what is it that I could do to to maybe try to see the chat? I'm, I'm using Chrome which usually works very, very okay. I don't know if I have some, I have some other browsers installed, but I don't know if this would, would actually help. I've got the Internet Explorer, which seems kind of weird to start. <laughs> but somewhere I don't see a chat. Uh, now, now the stream is going down. What the heck is going on here? This is really strange. Yeah, I think I've lost the connection. But what, what kind of thing is going on here? I don't see the chat. It's very strange. And I lost the internet connection. But I can still play, so... Very, very strange.
so okay the position is very nice but i i feel um you don't see me <laughs> to be honest okay i got a skype message that it's it works so i, I get constant messages that there are reconnection attempts and stuff like that and I don't know what it is because my internet is working perfectly fine I can open up websites and I can use chess 24 completely normally so only the live stream server gives me those messages so it's uh, extremely irritating hmm, very weird and I don't see a chat I mean this is also extremely strange So let's use this pin. Okay, hmm, yeah. I don't know. It doesn't. Okay, it's a technical win with c5. I'm winning a uh, second pawn. I know I actually see a, a chat message. Do I see my own messages? Now I see my own messages. Hmm. It's extremely strange what's going on there. I also don't understand the the video issues because my internet is working fine. It just whenever I start a live stream for the banter blitz, it does not work. Like today and last week. We did a test session today and it worked perfectly. It's not like I did not test it after last week's uh, problems. We did a test session today and there was no problem whatsoever. Only, only now there is an issue and I, I really don't know what to do about it. Uh, what a pest. So the chat didn't work. Uh, didn't work for uh, all of you. So it was not just. Uh, yeah, video is not working fine. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm. I'm going to try after this game if I can do anything about it. I kind of doubt it because I had exactly the same situation last weekend, um, <laughs> and now it says perfect streaming. I really wonder if this is some, some issue with the live stream and with the actual with the with the server, you know. Because I don't really know what to do about it. Now all is hunky dory, and it would be cool if it stays like that. It says perfect streaming. I don't have CPU load even. I mean, it's not like my machine is not capable of doing this, but very, very weird. Yeah, so I won this game against Phenomena. I was mostly looking at chat and everything else, so I didn't so uh, tell that much about the game. I'm sorry about all those technical um, issues. I have a hard time to understand what it is simply because we did a test run today and as I said, it worked perfectly fine. Um, so next game against Simon Schach and uh, I'm going to play the Sicilian. Okay, so I'm watching the chat. You probably should refresh if the video is not working. I think it should work now. Yeah, I also feel it shouldn't be my end because, as I said, we tested today and maybe it's a, it's a matter of the server load. I mean, it worked perfectly fine some hours ago. No, no issues whatsoever. And now we have this, or we had this problems again. And I can open up websites or whatever perfectly fine. I don't think... I have a general uh, internet 
um, performance issue. Okay, so we have a position here. Um, yeah, kind of a close Sicilian king's Indian attack kind of thing. I'm quite happy with this. The only move that irritates here is d4. Exactly. Huh, I'm not perfectly ready for this, to be to be honest. Hmm, I, I, I forgot about this a little bit. Hmm, not nice. What to do? Yeah, he's threatening d5, of course. Yeah, this is not good. This is not good. Yeah, uh, thanks for all the messages in the chat uh, about my match against Tal uh, Baron. People felt like I should have scored better. Mm, yeah, well, somehow you always should score better <laughs> in a way. I think he played very well in that match. I, I lost the match 4-1 uh, on Monday. I think he played very well in the match as far as I, as my gut feeling uh, goes during uh, the actual games. I, I felt he was playing very well. Um, and I didn't make um, the best of my chances, really. Um, I lost one game on time where I wasn't, to be, uh, to be honest, not, not quite aware that I was down on time. So I was very much caught by surprise that all of a sudden I had overstepped the time limit. Okay. So, um, what was wrong with bishop c4 instead of g4? Um, I don't see a g4 being played. Bishop c4 was a playable move, but I think um, I think this is okay here. I need the knight on c5 to to block um, to block a little bit. Maybe this one. Trying to take the the bishop on e3 or let him take on f5 so that I get his bishop then. The knight on e7 didn't look very good. Okay, so he takes this. Interesting. Yeah, a good game here by Simon Schach. Has a good central control. f4. Okay. It's a sharp, a sharp move. Okay, I'm putting the knight here, trying to block the rook here, and the rook cannot easily go over to f4. It's a um, complicated situation here. White is maybe a bit better, but hmm, I, I'm not completely positive about it. I think he should probably take now. Okay, if I, take, if I take with the C pawn, I open up his rook. I don't like that. Okay, this is strategically hmm, kind of iffy because he's got three against two now and maybe he's got F5, but when I put it there, hmm, I'm not sure about that. So it would be cool if I get in C4 and D3, but this is something that is feeling quite unlikely. Mm. Rook b3 could be a move. Yeah, this is actually threatening to play d3. Attacking the, uh, the rook on c2 and if it moves b2 is dropping. So that doesn't look bad. Oh, he doesn't react to it at all. Okay. That's surprising. Okay, I can take with the bishop even, yeah, and then bishop d4. Rook takes, queen d3 isn't isn't that brilliant. Okay, um, queen to b6 maybe. Okay. A d3 pawn, oh, wow. Whoa, very nice move. Okay, no, ah, I missed that one. Blundered my 
I blundered my important pawn there. Okay, very nice. Bishop f7 could be a move. Oh, okay. So here he can check me. He has a couple of checks. Okay, I'm going to let my pawn run. C3 takes C2 and I'm promoting. I'm not sure that I'm winning though, but okay. Yep, I agree. Well played game by White. He played it well. C2. So I'm going to be material up. But winning is another matter here. Yeah, Bishop F7. Yeah, I think he had that. <laughs> That looked um, that looked very powerful. Yeah, I've, I wonder if I can still win this here. Difficult. Maybe I should still check. <laughs> H5. Trying to come around to G4. Shouldn't trade trade so much. Okay. Yeah, I think now I got it. Yeah, a very good game here by the white player Simon Schach from Austria. I think Bishop F7 would have killed me. That was a was a was a slip that he could have been uh, could have been taken advantage of. Okay, next game against Bornali. Let's see what Bornali is up to with white. And um, yeah, okay, E4, E5 is my default move and I'm going for it. Oh, the exchange. Ooh, that's not very exciting, but uh, it's a good line, of course. Yeah, white grabs the bishop, the, the play on the h file is too strong. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. okay, so yeah. so that. Okay, this is a fairly interesting position. How to do this? Knight g6. Hmm. I also have c5, knight c6. <clears throat> I'm not sure about that. Where those pieces should be placed. Bishop e3 or g3 here. Goes to g3. Hmm. Okay, let's activate this. <clears throat> Maybe I can play f5 under favorable circumstances. Rook f8 and f5. He's got a very healthy pawn structure. This is why it's often. Um, well, often is a bit much, but it's sometimes difficult to do and uh, do something active against the exchange variation in the Rui because White's uh, structure is so immensely solid. Yeah, he's got no um, no weakness. Oh, now he created a weakness for himself. He's trapped his own rook on a one. 
Yeah, I'm winning the exchange here. Yep, so I'm getting the exchange. Um, yeah, and I go f5. Yeah, and I, I need need to activate my rooks here. The rooks have to um, be more active, and this looks like a way to do it. Okay, takes takes. Yep. So try to immediately activate both rooks. King g2 looks like the move to cover cover h3. Maybe I'm not really uh, attacking it, to be honest. My rook doesn't have many squares. It could, could be trapped after rook takes h3. Um, yeah, this is basically what he's telling me with this move. So, okay, I'm trading one rook. And, oops, no, <laughs> checking. Knight f4 is a rook trade, uh, sorry, is a, is this, is a minor piece trade. Um, yeah, this one, hmm. How to do it, yeah, probably. King up, prevent knight e6. Knight to f5, I can go g6. King e3, I got rook f1. Yep, okay, so this is not yet threatening anything. King e3 is a threat, okay, that's that's actually important. That is important. Yeah, I'm losing the h4 pawn. Hmm. Yeah, that structure is not particularly great. Okay, I think I should just give it up. He takes it now. I have um, this one, okay. So let's see if I can enter quickly with the rook. For rook a4. So if he goes knight f3, sorry, knight f5, I was trying to say. Uh, I want to have g6 ready for that and then cover the g-pawn. I can still enter with my rook. So rook a4 or going around to h1 seems better. So, okay. Getting b4 now, or does he have something there? I can go forward. Yeah, that wasn't uh, all that easy, to be honest, with my bad pawn structure winning this. I probably didn't play it well technically, but it wasn't easy, I think. Okay, Let's see what the b-pawn can do for me. <laughs> Seems like a draw. 
Oh, no, I should blunder. I should not blunder the rook. So let's not blunder the rook. Yes, there will be an ebook for the English series. Uh, the ebook is already um, almost completed. The English series on Chess Twenty Four is also um, um, going to be going to be released pretty soon. My the information that I have is that it should be later this week. But. Um, it's probably not 100% sure. I don't think this is a draw, to be honest. B3. A B pawn seems a bit too strong now. Yeah, very good fight uh, by Bonali after he blundered the exchange. It was a very um, tough nut to crack this pawn structure was so extremely uh, solid that I had a hard time breaking it down. Probably he had chances to to hold there. Okay, I'm playing Kromnik student who's in the chat, so he is definitely around. So I'm going with e5 here, I'm going to vary a little bit later. I'm also going to play a bit of my English repertoire in the next white game. Okay. Shouldn't really pre-move a6, yeah? a6 is very embarrassing after d4 especially. So are we. <laughs> okay, here's a crossroads for white. You can also go d3 as um analyzing some detail by Peter Swidler for his video series here on the side. So it's a main line though. He took 40 seconds to get to move nine, which is maybe something that's going to hurt him later. Bishop f7, I take the queen. Okay, not completely sure that I have the position in mind against Simon Schach. Maybe you're right. I'm sorry if I'm was seeing something uh, wrong there. I'm I'm still, I think, kind of irritated by the technical issues. <laughs> um, okay, so we have the the main uh, an old main line here of the Rui, a line that I have specialized in a couple of years ago. I'm not playing it anymore in uh, in tournament chess, but. I still do in blitz sometimes because whatever you can tell uh, say about the line I'm able to play many moves very quickly and this is not bad in blitz so you see that I'm having a pretty substantial advantage on the clock He played it well, Kromnik student. This is a very, very viable way of treating the position. Playing for f4. I'm reasonably happy here, but still white is certainly okay. Okay. Yeah, this is um, I'm pretty okay with this kind of situation. So I'm trying to harass him here. The issue with him taking on e5 with the with the bishop is the dark squared weaknesses. 
Um, this is now getting quite bad for white. Yeah, you played it very well, but taking only five with the bishop, I think, is questionable because you leave yourself very little options in this position after you've given up the dark squared bishop. And now this it shouldn't have ended that quickly, but I think white is struggling a bit after you you take there. Okay, so um, who do we have? Let's see if I can play against someone who've not I've not played yet. Old but gold, never played him before. So one of the C4 games. So let's see if I can give you a sneak preview of that C4 repertoire. Mm -hmm. Yeah, C6 white should definitely try to prevent d5. Now d5 is tough to play. I mean, black can play it, but I think after takes, takes and e5, white enjoys a slight advantage. Let's see, normally black players now go d6 and uh, go into a King's Indian style position. Yep, so he went for that. Yeah, sorry for the water noises, but I definitely need to need to drink something. It's pretty hot at the moment in, in Germany and when you when I'm doing the, the shows, yeah, I have to basically shut down the room. So um yeah, no um light from outside, only artificial light, no window open and so on. And uh, this means that this has this resembles uh, some kind of uh, yeah <laughs> it's it's very very hot what I'm trying to say okay so we have to we have transposed to a um, King's Indian fianchetto system this is not what I um, have recommended uh, in the uh, video series but It's also quite clearly a decent option for white. In many um, situations in the English opening, you have a couple of choices, which is why this opening is getting quite popular also on the top level, the 1c4 opening. Um, it is rather flexible. You can, you have less forced lines and lines where um, a huge simplification is taking place. So this is not um, so, um, yeah, it's not um, very straightforward compared to some E4 openings, for example. And this is what they like nowadays so that they can get a game going without many clear draw drawn lines. And this is really the case in the English quite often the positions might be equal, but they are equal with uh, both sides having almost all pieces on the board. So you still have something to fight for. Yeah, I'm playing this here rather quickly, but it's also very standard position. White has more uh, of the center, and my plan is to go f4, bishop f2, then maybe c5, so I'm going f4 now playing all those standard moves. I'm very well centralized and I have the bishop pair. So a position that I definitely like a lot for white. Yeah, let's see. He doesn't have any good counterplay is the problem. So, um, some c5 would be nice to get in. So I'm trying to do this. Well, I'm not sure actually, now that I see it again, 
Okay, let's say this here. That's not a. Oh, he has actually reacted immediately. So let's go back. Giving me new squares here. Oh, 95 or 9b5. That looks extremely annoying. Yeah. Poo, he probably has to go yeah there. Looking pretty pretty uh, unharmonious. So knight b6 and knight b6, rook a6, bishop c5 takes this wins material. Georgi says we never played before. Yeah, we'll try. I'll try. Okay, bishop c5 takes rook d8, rook b6, rook d8. Huh, this is wins material, but I wonder if it is that great, to be perfectly honest. Now that I check it again, he's getting the bishop to d4. Hmm. Bishop c5 takes rook d8. Check. And he's got knight c6 as well. No, that isn't any good, actually. That isn't any good. Okay, I'm going back. And now he's got knight c6 in. So that wasn't all that successful. Okay. So I'm giving up the exchange. This is still pretty nice. Knight on d5 is a monster. Yeah, that knight b6 move didn't really do anything good. Saw too late that um, bishop takes c5 wasn't um, wasn't a serious threat. Mm, okay, so going to e6 here. H4 bishop h3 would be would be pretty cool pretty good I think let's see if I can get that in one problem for him is the time he's he spent quite a bit of time and now he's very low ah he can take knight takes ah my god yeah, if you have 10 seconds, you, you sometimes lose uh, focus because you think, okay, I'm winning on time anyway. So it was pretty bad. Huh. Yeah, I've spoiled most of my advantage. I'm going to win this on time. Yeah, I blundered d6. That was, that was bad. Okay, Georgi said he never played me. I'd like to play those guys who never had the chance before, so I'm going to take this challenge. This is not whining in the chat. It's just I think um, those people who have not yet played me in earlier sessions should uh, really get this opportunity. Uh, junior chess team. Uh, yeah, you should be able to challenge me. Let me see if I've got a challenge from you. It should work. The other guys can challenge me as well. So we have a um, reversed Grand Prix attack. Here the most interesting move is the Somewhat surprising, maybe d5.
Okay, so he went for d5 after a while. Um, yeah, so clicking this. And uh, white absolutely should not be greedy, should give this back and now play knight f3. This is the way it uh, should be played. Yeah, I'm attacking the d6 pawn now. Black, yeah, goes for this or for um, the check. Yeah, queen b3. I can still irritate him a little bit here with the queen. Cannot castle. Okay, so <clears throat> knight to c4 and e4 coming up. Aha, uh -huh. okay, that's interesting. Okay, if I go queen to b5, c6, I can take. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, knight c4 is a bit. I can also take and go knight c4. It's, it's not bad, of course. Okay, let's let's do this very simple method. He cannot easily move his bishop as b7 is hanging. E5 is uh, attacked. Okay, now he theoretically can move the bishop at least. So Maybe here for rook c1. Hmm. Yeah, I think I'm a little bit more comfortable. There's also knight a5 in some, in some positions to put pressure on the queen side. Okay, so here I can either take and then check on the seventh or play knight a5. Both of them um, make some sense. I don't have to take. Maybe b4 is an idea here. Let's, let's do this. This is kind of interesting. The idea is b5 and then knight a5. A strategically quite interesting position. Knight to d5, oh, that's interesting. Maybe he wants to go, no, knight b6 doesn't really make that much, okay, make the, <laughs> what do you say, it doesn't really make that much sense, but it, is, it, should, it, can, it can of course be played. Okay, now e4. Yeah, both moves. Do make some sense, but taking with this. And now let's support the pawn. Quite an interesting position. He still he has this b7 pawn that is constantly uh, needing attention at the moment. 
but it's not so easy here to get something. Maybe, maybe this just gain space, space, space. Okay, I can I can try f five now. I'm going to do that. Playing aggressively here with his time ticking down. Okay, so here um, I have bishop g5 check if I like, but I think I'm just going to support the pawns more. Check. Hmm. How to do that if I am. I don't quite see how to make huge progress. I wonder if it actually makes sense to bring the knight to c5 here in this position. Might be, yeah, might be. He has problems to, to actually make moves. And C7 now hangs again, so. Um, so A6, sorry, A5, and uh, Knight C8. There is no clear way of doing much. Okay, so I'm just putting this up. Go from there. And now I can take and go g5. I think this is something that I want to do. If he takes twice, bishop h3 picks up the rook. Or the exchange, let's say. Okay, so rook here, that's knight to e7. Okay, but then I can take a7 for yet another pawn. Okay, what's the time I'm doing? 20 something seconds, okay. So bishop c5. Ah, okay. Yeah, that I blundered that pawn. Really blundered that pawn. But the h pawn is also pretty good to take. I've getting an, I'm getting an a pawn and a g pawn. So Yogi resigned. Yeah, a good defense here by Yogi. At the position I think was under some pressure there. Um, quite quite for a long time. Okay, so I'm getting to 2,700, that's nice. Have to be uh, content with that. Who do we have? Tolly Blunders 86, have not played Tolly before, so going to accept that challenge and play another 1c4 game. Let's see what we get. E5 is uh, the most popular move on almost all levels. Yeah, so here we probably, after d5, which I'm expecting, I can go to a Catalan with d4 or stay within English opening ready territory with b3, which is what I'm going to do here. And uh, this is also what I recommend in that upcoming um, video series. The thing is that um, the Catalan is a very good opening, of course, but it requires quite some work to uh, to play. And um, for that uh, series, I felt 
it's a good idea to always stay within the territory of the the English opening and not transpose into some other main line. Okay, here I'm trying to get in e4 quickly. And uh, yeah, he didn't prevent that. So I'm happy to grab all that space. If you give me space, I'm happy to do it. Yeah, b6, knight bd7, bishop b7 after b3 is fine. Yeah, black uh, black is, of course, uh, not in terrible shape there. I mean, he has played a very solid opening. It's just that for white, I think playing this instead of the Catalan can be a, a good option. Black will also equalize in the Catalan if he plays it correctly, so... Um, I don't really mind to allow equality because you cannot prevent it anyway. So you need to get a position that you feel you're comfortable with and that um, you also um, yeah, know better than your opponent. And if you know a good sideline better, there's nothing wrong with that. Okay, I'm attacking h5. Now he ha he basically has to take, I think. Hmm, not. Taking and h4 is what I expected. Yeah, no h4. It will be dangerous for black simply because of the open h file. So, um, yeah, there are a couple of options here. f4 taking is also possible. Not totally sure. Knight f3... Um, I don't like that much. Looks a bit, a bit on the passive side. So here, he will take this. But I, I'd like to go knight e4 here. Mm, okay, we just start with this. And maybe knight g6 back. He's got knight f4 again. It's still, it's still not bad. You can challenge me uh, by clicking on my my name, and uh, then you get get to challenges. Okay, I'm playing knight f3 now. I think I could have done that a lot better. In the English mainline reverse dragon, I have an interesting line um, with uh, rook b1 that I'm suggesting. I think white has some um, very interesting play there. Sending black some, some um, very direct problems. Okay, so it's not that easy here to break through getting to e4. Yeah, it's got bishop b7 coming. Or knight f4 maybe. Huh, I didn't even play that well. It was a very nice position initially. Oh no, I wanted to go queen h2. <laughs> I hope uh, this is not so bad. Okay. <laughs> I wanted to go to h2 to cover f4 and e5. 
but maybe it wasn't all that all that bad. Light looking good, but how do I how do I actually win the position? As nice as it looks, but Yeah, he's immediately giving up the exchange. Bishop e5, maybe, takes, knight, uh, take, queen takes. Check, 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 yeah, let's do it. And my name is not clickable in the profile. Oh, that's bad. I think... Hmm. Yeah, you've, you're perfectly right. It's not clickable. That's unfortunate. Yeah, then you, you have to then you have to search me actually. Okay, so he has to go rook d1, I guess. And then do I? Yeah, I'm getting I'm getting the pawns there. Yeah, the queen side pawns. So I will take his queen. I ah, resigned. Yeah, this is probably justified, but he, he defended this very well. I had a great position out of the opening, but I didn't really didn't really break um, um, break through. Okay, I'm going to play junior chess team now, who has managed finally to issue that challenge. So let's get going. Okay, I'm going to go with e5, my main move. And what is he doing? Okay, this line. Yeah, this is one of those mysterious lines where I never understand what's going on. Theory always says that black should take the draw there and this is slightly better for white. Yep, I don't understand. I just don't understand. In my book, this can never be slightly better for white. Might be equal, but white better? Nope. Yeah, he had rook d7, but... So yeah, he, he's quite active here, knight e5. Okay, I wonder if knight f5 is a, is a move actually. Bishop e6, he might take it. I cannot move the knight. There is some pressure there. And I don't know if I want to go f6. f6 looks quite wrong. Queen b7, queen b6 he can take. Okay, this is slightly annoying. Have to have to be clear on that. So Okay, so I've covered d5 now quite a bit and he's ready for knight to c5. Okay. I will go back to c8 though. I mean, white definitely is always uh, active enough to be okay. That's totally clear. Eh? He has this isolated pawn on d4, but his activity is completely uh, sufficient to be uh, all right. But I, I simply don't, un I simply don't believe that this should be any better for white. So I only recently played this line in a tournament game with success against a master level player. So. I feel fairly confident about Black's chances here. Uh, to be okay, yeah? not to win or anything, but I'm, 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 I just have a playable position that I can try to win. Okay, I'm having, I'm looking at this pawn now here. Ultimately, you want to win that pawn, so just blockading yeah, like they did in the old days. Is nice, but nowadays people are actually greedy and want to win pawns. And this is what I'm trying to do here as well. So, 
what's happening here? Am I not taking d4 next? He has rook e7 maybe at the end of this line. Okay. But we'll see. Okay, he has rook f4 as, as well. Then g5 traps the rook, winning the exchange. I have to be... Um, I have to be um, aware of the time here, of the time control. Okay, if I take here at the end, he's got um, rook to e7. So that was nicely spotted by my opponent. Hmm, so this is actually not that great to take. I have a, a bishop e7, no. Hmm. Ah, good move. Ah, I don't have time. And okay, this. Okay, I have to play a move. He has rook e7, I have rook d7. I, I'm getting his bishop here. I think. So happy to have taken that. Rook e8. Uh, he takes a couple of times. And goes knight d5. Anyway, I have to have to play moves. Uh, no, he, he, I, I had discovered. I, I couldn't do that. Um, uh, knight g6 is coming. Uh, I've got 14 seconds. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. I, he. He was just a lot quicker last couple of moves. The position. I don't know, but. He definitely played a lot quicker. Okay, he lets me catch up a little bit, that's good. What? Okay, I have to just accept this as working, yeah? <laughs> No, I'm blundering this. How did he see that? I lost on time. Oh my god. <laughs> and I felt I was reasonably quick at the end. Uh, okay. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I, I was so much low on time that it's uh, kind of surprised that I actually got that far. Whew, yeah, good game by junior chess team, um, and especially quick at one point, that got me into uh, into some issues. So GB twenty two eighty four. I have not played him yet. No, I've played him. It would have. I was kind of surprised there because he's a really regular opponent. So again, an English opening. Uh, let's see what Shuko is playing. So we are here. I'm going for this idea, playing for quick before stuff. Yeah, this is one of the Tabias of the of the English opening, a position that has been reached for, um, yeah, a couple of hundred times. Uh, no, I haven't played a Spectre. I can do that later, of course. Okay, I'm tr I'm uh, having I, I traded this, and now um, I'm going to try to. Put pressure on the queen side. Okay, so queen a7 or queen to a8. I think queen to a8. Trying to provoke b6. Yeah, 
he pretty much has to otherwise I'll take this on b7 or not oh so he feels that he's getting uh, compensation for, maybe he does but this is a matter of oh I know I'm trading Queens for sure so I'm just a pawn up now I thought he would take on a b7 and then try to drum up an attack with uh, me having traded the light squared bishop but um, that uh, wasn't his intention it seems here this is just very nice with an extra pawn Yeah, there is no serious counterplay if you have the queens traded. Okay, so here um, knight c4, I guess, can also go. Ah, that's that's okay. Just attack e5, and I don't see how he covers it. Ah, rook a8 was stronger. Rook takes e8, bishop d5, check. Hmm. Ah, hello to Toli Blundes. Yeah, he said he started playing by watching my channel. Yeah, that's cool if you got to really got into chess by watching some of my videos. Rook a8 was stronger. Rook takes a8, bishop d5, check, and then taking an a8. So I missed that opportunity. It is still um, very good, of course, but um, not as good as it could have been. Yeah, okay. Now I'm taking this opportunity. Yeah, there is no move. Eh? He's losing the knight. There's no way to save it, I believe. Okay, yeah, this is a, an interesting line that is uh, seen very often. This is kind of position. Um, yeah, I think he shouldn't give up the b7 pawn. This is probably uh, a bit a bit too much. Okay, so a spectre. Okay, I can play a spectre. It's a it's a premium account. It's a five. It's a four plus two game. So we have an increment going on here. Take that in mind. I like to play with increment. I think it. Uh, oops, I'm sorry. It increases the game quality quite considerably. But to understand for for watching the games, it is often better to have no increment. It just gives those uh, spectacular finishes <laughs> quite often. Okay, so he declined my invitation to a Benko or Benoni. We get to an English symmetrical opening now. Yeah. Bishop G2, why is sacrificing this normally? Okay. So is queen c6 a move? Probably bishop c5 also could be could be on. Knight g4. I wonder if I can actually play knight here, e3, and take it. Okay, I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying this. 
might not be totally sound, but it's uh, at least funky. Weird sounds <laughs> coming. Okay, so if he takes knight, I mean he has to take him, yeah? otherwise this, this doesn't make any sense. And now knight e2, knight d3 is made, and this is the only move. And now I can, now I can win the rook in the corner. But my knight is probably going to be trapped. And I have, I have really my doubts if this is good, but I wanted to try it. Okay, yeah, well, king c2, yeah, yeah this, is, this is true. Oops. So, he has to prevent knight f2 now. Hmm. I'm not sure that he's able to. Currently, I'm in exchange and two pawns up. The only way it is for him is to win the win the knight. So knight f2. I have to try to escape <laughs> via h3 or g4 or <laughs> something. Okay, now I'm escaping. That should be should be good. I think I'm preventing that b5. Blue card says, considering that most games don't take longer than 60, move 4 plus 2 increment would almost never give you more time than a 6 minute game. Does the increment matter if you are good with time management? The increment always matters because at least you're not going to be uh, losing some some completely random scramble like happened in the, in the game earlier where I was um, up everything and then I'm losing on time. This is not um, happening there with the increment. One thing that I um, that I really like about having an increment going at least at the end of the game. I'm not a big um, fan of having an increment from move one. I don't think that this does make much sense, but it makes sense that you are able to um, convert winning positions or defend totally drawn positions. One thing what I was getting at is um, what I think is a huge plus for the increment is that it totally um, gets the role of the arbiter out of it. The arbiter um, in, in, in sudden death time controls sometimes has to make decisions that he shouldn't be making. Like does one side make uh, considerable winning attempts or stuff like that. And um, this is something that an arbiter uh, quite often simply is not qualified to do. I know many arbiters who um, um, who have worked uh, or have uh, done uh, he, their jobs for the German Bundesliga, for example, and they're rated like 1500, 1600, something like that, and they are simply completely unqualified to um, to tell if one side is making winning attempts. I know that arbiters would would say otherwise, but they are simply not qualified, and uh, this this is. Um, completely out of the picture if you have an increment. People just play the game till the end. And this is what chess should be about. Yeah, playing games and trying to decide who, uh, or trying to um, make it count who's, who the better player is. And not in this case, uh, if you have a, a good arbiter or not. There are also arbiters who are doing a great job, job don't get me wrong. But um, it should not be the arbiter's role to decide if some, some sort can do a some some side can do a winning attempt or not. It's just nonsense to to uh, let people do that. And um, I've seen so many situations where the arbiters did very strange things. Yeah, I remember stuff happening in the in the in the women's uh, world championships in rapid and blitz, where the arbiter decided something utterly ridiculous. Yeah, they they <laughs> they replayed a game all of a sudden, and. Um, yeah, it was just completely ridiculous. Um, I don't know. So I think um, the game should be decided on the board by chess moves. And if you get an increment, you are able to prove if you know what the draw is or you are able to win a winning position. So I'm very much in favor of that. I personally don't play any events anymore without increment. I think... Uh, 
I really, I really, uh, there's no point in playing them. Okay, so let's open up the position to convert the material. How does the rule with the arbiter deciding if some site has winning attempts work? Um, how does it work? Yeah, if you feel like you have um, you are in this sudden death time control situation, and you feel like um, there are no winning attempts made by your opponent that he's solely playing on time, you can stop the clock and call the arbiter and say, uh, you know, I'm claiming a draw because my opponent is just playing on on time. He's just moving around basically, and the arbiter has to tell. If what the side, uh, yeah, if the, the the side with more time, if he's actually moving around or if he's doing something, and um, this sometimes is very obvious if one side is moving around, but sometimes winning uh, procedures are not exactly clear, and uh, you can just try. I mean, you try by uh, moving around a little bit. Try this setup, this setup. This is a winning attempt. Yeah, uh, a winning attempt uh, or not a winning attempt is to move rook a1, b1, a1, b1, a1, b1, b1 yeah, without um, doing a threefold repetition. You know, this is not a totally clear thing. It is uh, part of the, the arbiter's, uh, let's say, um, yeah, it's his job no, to, uh, to decide what, what's happening there. And I simply feel. This is something that shouldn't happen. Why should it be? I mean, you can just give people 30 seconds per move. And um, you can also do that just starting move 60 if you like, if you want the time scrambles before move 40 and 60. Just give people the increment at the end and then you can play out stuff. I think this is uh, just uh, far more logical than some arbiter deciding what's going on. I know that there are rules um, where you can um, actually all of a sudden get an increment and so on it, it's um, it's it's difficult business but um, I don't want to discuss that <laughs> even even more here I wonder what this is after e5 didn't go e5 okay yeah let's <laughs> let's try to have some fun here Queen h4 is a threat. Okay. Yeah, the interesting question is, can I do something else than knight e5? Probably not. So I'm going knight e5. This rule with the arbiter... Uh, deciding if there are winning attempts. Um, a couple of years ago, uh, we were playing uh, a league match. It was the, the penultimate round of uh, a match in the uh, fourth league, and it was about um, possibly uh, promoting to the third league, so quite serious business. And the absolutely final game that decided the whole thing was a position where, one, where the other uh, side uh, the other team's player had a rook, and our guy had a knight and a pawn. It was it was pretty pretty drawn, yeah. But um, he tried, yeah, tried on, but basically shuffling around aimlessly. And our guy uh, was low on time, and he claimed a draw. And the arbiter ultimately um, he said, "Okay, this is a draw." And this decision, this decision, gave us the promotion to the. Um, to the third league, basically. So in this particular case, the arbiter decided, I think, correctly, but the thing is, he shouldn't even have this role. So I think um, this is why I'm a huge fan of having some increment. Okay, interesting. I will go to, to B7 and try to um, claim, prove, 
that my bishop on b7 is a stronger piece. He has bishop d2 to c3 though. Okay, interesting move. Yeah, do I go d5? I think I do because he cannot go d4 now and uh, I actually, I wanted to get in d4 myself, but I don't think I can as the rook is always hanging. Yeah, d4 would be cool, but I don't get it in. He will play d4. Yeah, I can play like d4 and then c4, but I can also actually take and then play c5. Of course, now, why am I not doing this? This is a lot stronger, getting rid of my double pawn. So, if he goes d4 now, which I think he should. Oh, oh, so he allows me to go to d5. This is not a good idea, I believe. So what to do? Rook e6, g6, this kind of thing. He's got b4 coming. This is quite serious, actually. Yeah, hello to Nelkov in the chat. Yeah, b4 is a serious move, actually. Oh, not that good. But okay, I'm going to bring this to g6. And then we'll see from there. Queen h4. King h2, I can take h3 for mate. This is quite funky. So what is he doing now? King h2, queen h3 is a funny way to, <laughs> to end the game. Yeah, you can take... Oh wait, let's just for one moment think and think this through. Takes king h2. No, I have rook h3, okay. Let's not do any pre-moves. Yeah, the thing is that after king up, I can go here and win like that. Yeah, my bishop got extremely strong. He should have played d3 to d4 to not allow that bishop to be on that strong diagonal that easily, I think. Still, good defense by all, but... So, what do we have? A couple of challenges still on. Do we have someone who have not played? Probably not. Yeah, blue car, I only played once. I did I play him earlier in the session, actually. I didn't want, I don't want to do double challenges in one session. I'm not sure. Anyway, let's let's do it. G6. Let's try something else. Going for a fianchetto. To attack that center. Amiktar played long ago. Yeah, maybe 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 next game. Going to go for one more, I guess. I lost some time early on due to the technical things. Now it all seems to work perfectly fine. Okay, um, this is a fairly good line for black. The reason is that knight c2 um, here isn't all that great. I can take on c3 or play d6. Okay, e3 is super solid. And not bad, actually. This is one of the better moves there. Should try to get eight queens. <laughs> I'm probably not going to manage that. So bishop g2. I wonder if I can do something on that slightly weakened c4 pawn. 
95, huh? a move like that. Hmm, it doesn't do that much. D6 I cannot play, as C6 is hanging. Well, maybe I can. Sometimes you can sacrifice such a pawn. Sure. Just B3 is probably good. I didn't see how else to go D6 without giving up a pawn. He can go F4, but that's also a little bit weakening. Yeah, white can castle, bishop b2, queen e2, all makes perfect sense. Well, famous problem, problem in programming, put eight queens on the board so that no queen can capture one, one another. Hmm. Okay, I'm terribly bad with things like that. I'm not going to try even. I'm also notoriously bad with uh, like retro games yeah? where you have to somehow find out how a certain position uh, did come up. I never find anything there. I mean like never. Okay, bishop d7, f4 is uh, almost trapping my knight. I try to play mostly people I haven't played before. Yeah. Um, I cannot do b5 here, unfortunately. Is this one maybe? Yeah, I do it. T today I'm going to go with this approach. Okay, um, so here, take. He still has f4. Okay. The only thing that I like about this is that I have more time. But blue car has played very well. I think knight e4 was helping me a little bit because I had less space and those trades, a trade is generally in favor of the side who's sitting there with a space disadvantage. Not a big deal, but oh yeah, he tries to trade even more, yeah, okay. Don't really have much else. Okay, I'm going b5 now. So Johnny Starbuck asks, do, do you play many gambits? A very easy answer, no. There are not many playable gambits anyway. I play the Banco Gambit sometimes in my Blitz games, but I don't really have, and the and I play gambits sometimes in the English opening, like in the Reti opening. I have some some sharp lines, eh? but um, I don't play any. Uh, yeah, I don't know any nonsense like the King's Gambit or so. Okay, so I think F five. Oh, he's got the check actually. Yeah, it's still still not bad. Opening up D, and yeah, now I get to go to D3. This will be tricky, attacking three things. Pawn, Rook, Bishop, it's a bit, a bit much. So what to do here? Okay, so he gives me f2 actually. So I'm grabbing it. Mm 
Hmm, okay. Let's not blunder the pawn. Uh, okay, so b4. I actually have the check on the second rank, so. Hmm, but why can you do that? I thought this wins the bishop, and it does. I can take this as well, but let's take the bishop as long as I'm able to. Yeah, blue car resigns. He had a, a good position out of the opening, I think, very well played, but he traded too much. You should keep pieces on the board. I know there's this tendency of um, like trading against a higher rated player, but it's um, it's something that is not helpful if you have more uh, space. So GB2284, playing here one of the slow lines. C4, C5 is very solid for black. Interesting. So um, I think I'm taking more space here. should check by the way if this is a three or five minute game it's a five minute game okay so we have this traded let's put this knight okay actually goes there mm -hmm. so do I trade here or not mm -hmm. okay I'm going to do this Okay, he's got d5 coming up, but his development is not all that great. Hmm, I wonder what he's currently thinking of. Isn't bishop g7? Yeah, bishop g7 is the most um, normal move ever. So this, with similar intentions, bishop h6 in case of a knight move. Okay, that's an interesting way of playing. But now my development is pretty okay here. Yes. Okay, I'm not able to easily get him to take Okay, this is a controversial move. I don't know if this is good for me or not. Provoking d4. We'll see what happens. Uh, maybe you can take and then play d4 yeah you never know it's not that easy most logical is d4 grabbing space while not trading my thought process was that this is interesting and then trying to go like queen f1 rook e1 
and f5 is not a move he likes to play I'm very sure Also at knight d5, but I want to prepare rook e1. <laughs> okay, so I should have played knight d5. Uh, okay. <laughs> Sometimes you quite quickly see if you uh, had the right idea. I could have still done that actually because knight f6 is a big threat. I should have played it. Really should have played it. Okay. So knight d5, threatening knight f6 and attacking the bishop. It's something that I could have done earlier. So it might not be all that bad. Yep, so one possible move. So I'd be quite happy if I can take on d six. So he's going away. Um so Let's go here for queen to e1. Just slowly creeping forward. Knight e7, there's queen to e1. So that's a pin he doesn't want. Maybe I should have gone queen to e1. No? Let's do this for a5. So what to do here? a6 or taking? a6 introduces that capture idea on b6, so I'm preferring that. Always has to watch out for knight takes b6 now. Okay. <laughs> Don't see how to enter his position. G4, Queen H3. It's not doing much. Hmm. We can probably hold. shouldn't lose this by the way but uh, it's not a good idea <laughs> uh, it's probably a draw he defend I can go Queen f2 though there's f6 hanging ah okay okie dokie And a draw, well played by GB2284, I think well defended, always kind of hanging on. I had this 95 opportunity, 95 opportunity earlier, I think, which maybe would have won, don't know exactly. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed the show. It um, got on the road a little bit bumpy, but uh, it was working fine after minute 10 or so.
I'm not quite sure again what happened there as we tested it perfectly. Okay, I hope you enjoyed it. I'll be back next Wednesday at the same time, in the same place. Thanks you. Thank you for watching. Bye bye.